All right, folks, welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today, we got a great little meter for you by Tesman. It is their TCM 300D. We're gonna be going over a how-to video of this. So we'll start out uh, going through all the functions then just telling you the names of those functions and then we'll circle back to the beginning and then we'll run through a practical demonstration of all the measurements of all the different functions. So if you're considering purchasing this meter, I should have a discount code for you in the description. I've also got my link tree down there with merch, tools, exclusive offers, a bunch of different stuff so go check it out really helps the channel also helps the channel if you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and if you have any questions comments or concerns please let me know down in the comment section i always do my best to try to get back to everybody the first thing that i really like about this meter is it's got a great display and it actually has this really cool function that took me a minute to figure out. When you first boot up the meter, it's in this auto showing you these four different settings. And if you're not sure what comes with the meter, it comes with a decent set of leads, a thermal couple attachment, your manual, and a nice little case for you. But I thought this was pretty cool. Your red lead is always gonna go in the input port. Black lead's gonna go in your com port. What the meter's trying to tell you when it's in this function, let's get a little battery going here is that when you first start it up and it's in an auto state and you get carried away and start doing some measurements, it should auto detect. It can tell, okay, we're measuring DC voltage and it's coming back at 3.28. So I thought that was a really cool feature, but let's go ahead and start at the beginning. The main function of this, or like the main, I guess, marketing point of this meter is gonna be its inrush amp clamp capability. But let's start at the beginning. So it's gonna default to DC amperage. It can be kind of confusing if you're not used to this style of display. This secondary display up here, it's gonna display ambient room temperature in Celsius and then sometimes it'll be in Hertz. It'll change depending on the setting that you're in. So you'll want to pay attention to that. But we're in DC amp clamp and we can do selection. Now we're in AC and notice how this top portion has changed to Hertz. And if we hit selection again, that'll bring us to an AC inrush current measurement. We can go to function. We'll go to volts DC. Hit that again. We're in volts AC. Change to Hertz. Then we have ohms, auto ranging in ohms from ohms to kilo ohms to mega ohms. We have our continuity setting. Then we get to diodes, millivolt in DC, AC. Hertz will display duty cycle at the top and now Hertz is at the bottom. So it can that Hertz can kind of switch around. So just pay attention to what the screen is saying for that. Capacitance. Then we have our thermal couple setting. Now this top display will display ambient temperature and Fahrenheit. And then your main display is Celsius. Then you'll use your thermal couple attachment leads for this setting. And finally, we're at non-contact voltage. If we hit selection, that'll bring us to the live function, which I prefer over the non-contact voltage. We're gonna go all of this into more detail. There's an intro on the meter. Let's go ahead and get started. ahead and start with our DC set steady state amp clamp measurement. The DC function can be really sensitive. So what I like to do is put my amp around my conductor. Everything's in the off position. You'll hit and hold the zero button. We'll see zero indicated at the top. Then we can turn on our load and take a measurement. Now a mistake often people will do is they'll have their clamp around both plus and minus or hot and neutral. And then they'll attempt to make a current measurement the two of them will zero each other out though, so you're not gonna see a change. So you wanna do one or the other. So that's the DC amp clamp measurement, super cool. Let's go ahead and move on to AC steady state current clamp measurement. So that means for something that's con running continuously, we'll be able to make an amperage measurement. Notice how my clamp is only around one conductor. If you have your clamp around both conductors, they'll cancel each other out and you'll get that zero reading. And you'll see, although Hertz is displayed, you won't be getting a Hertz measurement with this reading. So I'll turn on the motor, you'll see kind of a spike and then you'll see the meter settle in to the actual running current. That little spike that you see initially, it's picking up the inrush current. That's the next function that we'll cover. You won't be able to hear me over the motor but I'll demonstrate taking a measurement around just one conductor and then I'll show you the type of reading that you get if you have it around both hot and neutral and you'll be able to see how it cancels each other out.
This is the inrush current measurement. So it's gonna take a snapshot of just the initial current draw by the motor. Now this is the current draw needed for capacitors, inductive loads, transformers to initially start chooching away before they settle into their steady state or to the running current. So I'll turn on the motor briefly. The number should spit out a number and that's telling us, hey, when we first engage that motor, cause we saw the running AC current uh, amperage measurement for this was settled around seven amps. A good of thumb for inrush current is somewhere between five and seven times that steady state current. So I'll flick on this motor really quick and let's see the number that it comes up with. Okay, so this is telling us it took about 45, 46 amps to kick on this motor initially. That's a pretty cool function. Let's move on to our voltage measurements. AC and DC voltage measurements should be pretty straightforward. Black to COM, red to input. It'll default to DC. You can take measurements of batteries and things like that. And remember for DC measurements, red to positive, black to negative, if you have them reversed, the meter will display a negative sign. And that's just saying reverse polarity. That's all that means. So if you see that negative sign on the display, don't get too confused. Then we have our AC. Now we will actually be able to get Hertz on this reading and polarity of the leads doesn't matter. Red can go to hot or black can go to hot. The voltage and current are moving in both directions um, 60 times a second. That's what the Hertz is for, or alternating current. So it doesn't matter, but it is best practice to use red on your hot, black to your neutral, keep red on hot, black to ground, and then we can go red to neutral, black to ground, and you can see there our voltage has dropped off. That is AC and DC voltage. All right, let's just go ahead and run through the rest of these settings. Next up, we have ohms. Remember, ohms should be auto-ranging. I mean, I guess all of the functions on this are kind of auto-ranging. It's showing 146 ohms. I've just got a couple little examples here. That's 5.5K ohms. So pay attention to the bottom display here. That K means times this number by a thousand, and that's how many you actually have. Pay attention to those little details on these meters, or it can be really confusing. Then continuity is just to show you that there is some kind of flow and releases a tone. This is really nice for tracking wires down and it's got a green indicator at the top and it produces a tone so you don't have to look at your meter. This is good like, you know, if you got a bundle of like 20 wires and you're trying to figure out which is which, it's a really good setting for that. Now we can go to diodes and we should see the voltage drop in one direction and then we should see an open measurement in the other direction. We always test diodes in both directions and that'll tell us if the diode is good. Another little test I always like to do on these meters is sometimes the meter will produce enough voltage in this test to show you the forward voltage of an LED. It's not always the case, but I always like to check. And if it can turn it on, that means it takes 2.6 volts to turn on this LED, which is pretty cool. Next up we have millivolts and that defaults to DC. Again, we wanna be mindful of our polarity, red to red, black to black, and we can see we're reading 30 millivolts. So you wanna be careful and pay attention to that M. A little M is for milli, big M is for mega. I believe it has that for DC or AC as well. I don't have any AC millivolt signals, but it's handy that it has that. And we can do Hertz and duty cycle. I've got, this little meter right here will output a square wave and we can measure it. This is telling me at the percentage, duty cycle is expressed as a percentage. That's why that percentage sign is there. So this is saying it's about a 50% duty cycle. And then at the bottom here is Hertz, where it's saying 47 Hertz. That means it's turning on and off 47 times per second. Next up is capacitance. We want to make sure to always discharge our capacitors before we try to measure them or it could damage the meter. If the capacitor is attached to a board or something else like that, you always want to detach one leg of the capacitor. These tests usually take a second because it's trying to charge up the capacitor and then it's going to give us a rating and it's reading at 640 microfarads. And then we can compare that. This has 680. So I think that's with intolerance. I think it's plus or minus 10%. Can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, next we have the thermal couple setting. 
So we'll remove our normal leads. We can go ahead and attach our thermal couple leads. And this is a really special set of wire and leads going on right here. Black to com, red to input, and we'll go to function. We should have our Fahrenheit and our Celsius. And I always just like to put my finger on it, warm it up, make sure it's working properly. I don't know if you know much about these thermocouple leads, but it's two different types of conductors, two different materials that are run through this whole thing. And when there's a difference, a temperature difference generates a very, very small voltage. And that's what the meter's reading, and that's how it knows the temperature. And then finally, we have our non-contact detection. So that'll tell us if we're getting to a circuit that's live. Red indicator. Or if it's dead. Now, non-contact isn't exactly the most reliable. That's what the live setting is for. You can go ahead and plug in a lead. Hit selection, you'll see the live get brought up. And this way we're actually making contact with some kind of conductor and it's telling us if it's alive or not. This is a pretty cool little meter. I did enjoy it. I was kind of surprised by it. It's a lot of bang for your buck. Check out the links in the description. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you gotta do. Thank you for joining me in another adventure in the garage and I'll check you on the next one.